Hello, good evening. Welcome to my living room. My name is Lana Labonte. And if this is the first time you are seeing me, I am here to uplift, support, inspire, and empower you to be the best you that you can be by being the living example of what I've been through. You can heal from anything. So tonight, again, we are continuing on with The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And we are moving on to chapter six, The Secrets of the Spiritual Heart. I hope you're enjoying these readings. These are great ways to take things in, savor them. Each chapter has something you should contemplate and reflect upon because that's how we grow, is we, we go within so we don't go out. So, the secrets of the spiritual heart. Very few people understand the heart. In truth, your heart is one of the masterpieces of creation. It is a phenomenal instrument. It has the potential to create vibrations and harmonies that are far beyond the beauty of pianos, strings, or flutes. You can hear an instrument, but you feel your heart. And if you think that you feel an instrument, it's only because it touched your heart. Your heart is an instrument made of extremely subtle energy that few people come to appreciate. In most human beings, the heart does its work unattended. Even though its behavior governs the course of our lives, it is not understood. If at any given point in time the heart happens to open, we fall in love. If at any given point in time it happens to close, the love stops. If the heart happens to hurt, we get angry. And if we stop feeling it all together, we get empty. All of these different things happen because the heart goes through changes. These shifts, these energy shifts and variations that take place in the heart run your life. You are so identified with them that you use the words I and me when you refer to what's going on in your heart. But in truth, you are not your heart. You are the experiencer of your heart. Now I didn't plan it, but I'm wearing my heart. My little bumblebee my queen bee and my heart buzz buzz frequencies harmonies the vibration of the earth of the collective is the buzz of the bee the heart is actually very simple to understand it is an energy center a chakra It is one of the most beautiful and powerful energy centers and one that affects our daily lives. As we have seen, an energy center is an area within your being which your energy focuses, distributes, and flows. This energy flow has been referred to as Shakti, Spirit, and Chi, and it plays an intricate part in your life. You feel the heart's energy all the time. Think about what it is like to feel love in your heart. Think about what it is like to feel inspiration and enthusiasm pour from your heart. Think about what it is like to feel energy well up in your heart, making you confident and strong. All of this happens because the heart is an energy center. The heart controls the energy flow by opening and closing. This means that the heart, like a valve, can either allow the flow of energy to pass through or it can restrict the flow of energy from passing through. If you observe your heart, you know very well what it feels like when it's open and what it feels like when it's closed. In fact, the state of your heart changes quite regularly. You can be experiencing great feelings of love while in the presence of someone until they say something you don't like. Then your heart closes toward them, and you simply don't feel the love anymore. We all have experienced this, but what exactly is causing it? Since we all have to experience the heart, we might as well understand what's going on in there. 
we begin this analysis by asking a fundamental question. What is it about the structure of the heart center that permits it to close? What you will find is that the heart closes because it becomes blocked by stored, unfinished energy patterns from your past. You need only examine your everyday experiences to understand this. As events take place in this world, they come in through your senses and have an impact on your inner state of being. The experience of these events may bring up some fears, some anxiety, or maybe some love. Different experiences happen inside because of how you take in and digest the world as it passes through you. When you take in the world through your senses, it is actually energy that is coming into your being. Form itself does not come into your mind or heart. Form stays outside, but it is processed by your senses into energy patterns that your mind and heart can receive and experience. Science explains the sensory process to us. Your eyes are not really windows through which you look out into the world. Your eyes are cameras that send electronic images of the world into you. This is true of all your senses. They sense the world, convert the information, transmit the data through electrical nerve impulses. And then the impressions get rendered into your mind. Your senses are indeed electronic sensing devices. But if the energy patterns that are coming into your psyche create disturbance, you will resist them and not allow them to pass through you. When you do this, the energy patterns actually get blocked within you. The body's always telling on the mind. And it's just like resistors. Think about a transistor radio and flipping switches and changing, or just simple electronics, you know, the on off switch, turning the lights on, turning the lights off. This is essentially what you do with your heart. We don't think of it that way, but in so many experiences where you felt, oh, my heart got hurt, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna protect it, which means you close off your heart. And it's kind of apropos because ever since I had my breast implants removed, I recognized that having two foreign sacks in front of my heart was like a shield. And that was literally suffocating hindering the block, the flow of energy to move through my heart fully. So much so that it burst through and caused a rupture of one of my implants. That's my theory. But it is a true thing that when we put up a wall, physical, emotional, mental, even spiritual, we're only cutting off our own life support. We're doing it to ourselves. Nobody hurts us. It's that closing down of our own heart, our ability to receive or even give. You can't have one or the other. You can't have one without the other because it's receptivity. It is duality. It is life. You can't have one without the other. They are not independent. They are interdependent. This is very important. To better understand what it's like to have these energies stored within you, let's first examine what it would be like if nothing was stored. What if everything just passed right through you? For example, when you're driving down a highway, you probably pass through thousands of trees. They don't leave impressions on you. They're gone as soon as they're perceived. While you're driving, you see trees. You see buildings. You see cars. And none of these make lasting impressions upon you. There's just a momentary impression that allows you to see them, though they do come in through the senses and make impressions upon your mind. As qu quickly as the impressions are made, they are released. When you have no personal issues with them, impressions process freely. This is how the overall system of perception is meant to work. It's meant to take things in, allow you to experience them, and let them pass through so that you're fully present in the next moment. While this system is in work, a working operative state, you are fine and it is fine. You're simply having experience after experience. Driving is an experience. Trees passing by are an experience. 
and cars pa passing by are an experience. These experiences are gifts that are being given to you, like a great movie. They are passing into you, awakening and stimulating you. They are actually having a profound effect on you. Moment after moment, experiences are coming in and you're learning and growing. Your heart and mind are expanding and you are being touched at a very deep level. If experience is the best teacher, there's nothing that comes close to the experience of life. And this is also speaking to non-attachment. That's what it means to be not, to be detached, to not attach, to cling, to hold on to something. Because when we try to hold on to the best feeling or we try to reject the worst, that is attachment in both senses. The pushing away is just as strong as the pulling toward. The allowing is keeping the energy in flow and in movement as it's meant to. It's supposed to come and it's supposed to go. But us silly humans, we want to hold on and then we want to push. We make it so much more complicated than it really is. What it means to live life is to experience the moment that is passing through you and then experience the next moment, and then the next. Many different experiences will come in and pass through you. It's a phenomenal system when it is working properly. If you could live in the state, that state, you would be a fully aware being. That is how an awakened being lives in the now. They are present, life is present, and the wholeness of life is passing through them. Imagine if you were so fully present during each experience of life that it was touching you to the depth of your being. Every moment would be a stimulating, moving experience because you would be completely open and life would be flowing right through you. And that's what keeps you youthful, alive, is that continual flow, waves in and out, crashing, ebbing, flowing, growing, experiencing, and expanding. Life is a dance. And when you stop dancing, life stops happening the way it's meant to. Hmm. But that's not what's happening inside most of us. Instead, it's more like you're driving down the street, here comes the trees, here comes the cars, and it's all passing right through you with no trouble. Then. Inevitably, something comes in that doesn't make it through. There was this one car, a light blue Ford Mustang that looked like your girlfriend's car. But as it passed, you noticed two people hugging in the front seat. At least it looked like they were hugging. And it sure looked like your girlfriend's car. But it was just a car, a car just like any of the others, wasn't it? No, it wasn't just like all the others to you. Let's look carefully at what happened. Surely for the camera of the eyes, there's no difference between that car and the others. There's light bouncing off of objects, passing through your retina and making a visual impression in your mind. So at the physical level, nothing different is going on. But at the mental level, the impression didn't make it through. When the next moment comes, you no longer notice the rest of the trees. You're not seeing the rest of the cars. Your heart and mind are fixed on that one car. Even though it's gone, you've got yourself a problem here. There's a blockage, an event that got stuck. All the subsequent experiences are trying to pass through you, but something has happened inside that has left this past experience unfinished. What happens to that experience that didn't make it through? Hmm. Specifically, what happens to the image of the girlfriend's car if it doesn't just fade away into deep memory like everything else? Mm. At some point, you'll have to stop focusing on it in order to deal with something else like the next stoplight. What you don't realize is that your entire experience of life is about to change because of what didn't make it through your life. Life must now complete, compete. Life must now compete with this blocked event for your attention. And the impression doesn't 
just sit in there quietly, you will see that your tendency is to think about it constantly. This is all in an attempt to find a way to process it through, through your mind. You didn't need to process the trees, but you need to process this. Because you resisted it, it got stuck. And now you have a problem. You see the thought start up. Well, maybe it wasn't her. Of course it wasn't her. How could it that possibly have been? Thought after thought goes on inside. It drives you crazy in there. All that inner noise is just your attempt to process the blocked energy and get it out of the way. Long term, the patterns that cannot make it through you are pushed out of the forefront of the mind and held until you're prepared to release them. These energy patterns, which hold tremendous detail about the events associated with them, are real. They don't just disappear. When you're unable to allow life's events to pass through you, they stay inside and become a problem. These patterns may be held within you for a very long time. It is not easy to keep energy together in one place for, for long. As you willfully struggle to keep these events from passing through your consciousness, the energy first tries to release by manifesting through the mind. This is why the mind becomes so active. When the energy can't make it through the mind because of conflicts with other thoughts and mental concepts, it then tries to release through the heart. That is what creates all the emotional activity. When you resist even that release, the energy get packed up and forced into the deep storage within the heart. In the yogic tradition, that unfinished energy pattern is called a samskara. This is a Sanskrit word meaning impression. And in the yogic teachings, it is considered one of the most important influences affecting your life. A samskara is a blockage, an impression from the past, an unfinished energy pattern that ends up ruining and running your life. And just the name, the word samskara, it has the word scar in it. Scar of the heart is how I interpret that. It has etched itself deep within and it's that pain that until you heal it fully, you have to feel it fully. Then you can reveal it and heal it. It's unfinished business and it's unresolved. In order to understand this, let's first take an in-depth look at the physics behind these blocked energy patterns. Just like energy waves, the energy that comes into you must keep moving. But that doesn't mean it can't get blocked within you. There is a way that the energy can keep both moving and staying in one place. And that is to circle around itself. We see this in atoms and in planetary orbits. Everything is energy and energy will just expand outward if it is not contained. For there to be manifest creation, energy must get in the dynamic of cycling around itself to create a stable unit. Anybody come to mind with those sheep that are running in circles for weeks? That's the first thing that popped in my head when I reread this. Hmm. It's a manifestation, energy. So again, let's say that. For there to be manifest creation, energy must get in the dynamic cycling around itself to create a stable unit. That means matter, that means form. That's why energy manifesting as an atom forms the basic building block of this entire physical universe. Energy cycles around itself. And as we've discovered, atoms have enough energy, have harnessed enough energy to blow up the world when that energy is released. But unless forced otherwise, the energy will stay harnessed because of its equilibrium state. This process of cycling energy is exactly what happens with a samskara. A samskara is a cycle of stored past energy patterns in a state of relative equilibrium. It is your resistance to experiencing these patterns that causes the energy to keep cycling around itself. There is no other place for it to go. You won't let it. 
This is how most people process their issues. This packet of cycling energy is literally stored in your energetic heart center. All the samskaras you have collected over your life are stored there. Scars upon scars. To fully appreciate what this means, let's go back to the example of the light blue Mustang. The light blue Mustang that looked like your girlfriend's car. Once the disturbed energy patterns are packaged and stored in the heart, they are basically inactive. It may look to you like you have handled the situation. Oh, that mind is so clever. And that you have no more issues with that experience. You may not even mention the event to your girlfriend because it would look like you were jealous. You didn't know what to do, so you resisted the energy. And it got stored in the heart where it could fall into the background and not be bothersome, or so it appeared. While it may seem like it's done, like it is all over and gone, it really isn't. Every one of the samskaras that you have stored is still there. Everything that did not make it through you from the time you were a baby all the way to this moment is still inside of you. It is these impressions, these samskaras, that encrust the valve of the spiritual heart. That incrustation builds up and restricts the energy flow. Now that we understand where the blockages within the heart comes from, we have answered the structural question of how the heart gets blocked. You can certainly see the potential for impressions to build up to the point where very little energy can make it through. If they build up sufficiently, you will find yourself in a state of depression. In that state, all becomes dark. This is because very little energy is coming into your heart or mind. Eventually, everything appears negative because the world of the senses must pass through this depressed energy before it gets to your consciousness. But even if you aren't prone to depression, your heart still gets blocked over time. It just builds up. It doesn't always stay blocked, however. Depending upon life's circumstances and life's experiences, it can open and close quite frequently. This leads us to our next question. What is the cause of these frequent changes in the state of the heart? If you watch carefully, you will see it is related to the same stored past impressions that caused the blockages. The stored energy patterns are real. A samskara is actually programmed with the specific details of the event that could not pass through. If you experience jealousy because you thought you saw your girlfriend hugging someone in a car, very detailed data about that event is stored in the samskara. It has that event's vibration. It has that event's nature. And it even retains your level of sensitivity about the event. To see this, let's watch what happens in the future. It's five years later, and you're no longer with your old girlfriend. You've married someone else, and you're much more mature. One day you're out driving along with the family, having a wonderful time. The trees are going by, the cars are going by, and the light blue Mustang drives by with two people hugging in the front seat. Immediately something changes in your heart. Your heart actually skips a beat. Then it starts beating faster. You start getting moody. Irritated and agitated, you aren't having such a nice day anymore. All of these interchanges occur because your heart got disturbed when you saw one particular car. It is truly amazing to step back and look at this process. Five years ago, for just a few moments, an event took place. You never discussed it with anybody. And now five years later, a light blue Mustang drives by and it changes the energy flow through your heart and mind. As unbelievable as this seems, it is true. And it's not only true about light blue Mustangs, it's true about everything that didn't make it through you. No wonder we're so overwhelmed. No wonder the heart keeps opening and closing. The energy that's stored there is real and it interacts with the flow of current thoughts and events. Whew, the dynamics of this interaction cause the vibrations that are stored as samskars to get activated, sometimes years later. This is what happened with the light blue Mustang Understand, however, that it didn't even have to be the identical car to activate the stored energy. Could have been a black Mustang or any other car with people hugging. 
Anything in that neighborhood has the potential to stimulate a samskara. The point is that past impressions do get stimulated, even old ones, and they affect your life. Sensory inputs from today's events dig through all the stuff you have stored through the years and they restore the exact past patterns associated with the incoming events. When a samskara is stimulated, it opens like a flower and it begins to release the stored energy. Suddenly, flashes of what you experienced when the original event took place rush into your consciousness. The thoughts, the feelings, sometimes even the smells and other sensory input. The samskara can store a complete snapshot of the event. It is way beyond any computer storage system created by human beings. It can archive everything you were feeling, everything you were thinking, and everything was, that was happening surrounding the event. All this information is stored into a tiny energy bubble within your heart. Years later, it gets stimulated and instantly you are experiencing the feelings that felt in the past. Everything you felt in that past moment comes right back rushing. You can actually feel the fears and the insecurity of a five-year-old when you're 60. What is happening is that unfinished mental and emotional energy patterns are getting stored and reactivated. But it is just as important to realize that most of what you take in does not get blocked. It makes it right through you. Imagine how many things you see all day. They're not all stored like that. Of all these impressions, the only ones that get blocked are those that cause either problems or some extraordinary sense of enjoyment. Yes, you store positive impressions too. When a wonderful experience happens to you, it doesn't make it through because you cling to it. Clinging means I don't want this one to go away. He told me he loved me and I felt so loved and protected. I want to keep reliving that moment. Play it back for me over and over again. Clinging creates positive samskaras. And when these are stimulated, they release positive energy. Hence, two kinds of experiences can occur that block the heart. Powerful. You are either trying to push energies away because they bother you, or you are trying to keep energies close because you like them. In both cases, you are not letting them pass and you are wasting precious energy by blocking the flow through resisting and clinging. The alternative is to enjoy life instead of clinging to it or pushing it away. If you can live like that, each moment will change you. If you are willing to experience the gift of life instead of fighting with it, you will be moved to the depth of your being. When you reach this state, you will begin to see the secrets of the heart. The heart is the place through which energy flows to sustain you. This energy inspires you and raises you. It is the strength that carries you through life. It is a beautiful experience of love that pours through your whole being. This is meant to be going on inside you at all times. The highest state you have ever experienced is simply the result of how open you were. Sit with that for a moment. The highest experience that you have ever felt of love was the most open you allowed yourself to be. That's how powerful you are. If you don't close, it can be like that all the time. Don't sell yourself short. If you don't close, it can be like that all the time. This can go on all the time. Unending inspiration, unending love, and unending openness. That is the natural state of a healthy heart. To achieve this state, simply allow the experiences of life to come in and pass through your being. If old energies come back up because you were unable to process them before, let go of them now. It's that easy. When the light blue Mustang drives by and you feel fear or jealousy, just smile. Be happy that this samskara, 
which has been stored down there for all this time, has the opportunity to make it through you. Just open, relax your heart, forgive, laugh, or do anything you want. Just don't push it back down. Of course it hurts when it comes up. It was stored with pain, it's going to be released with pain. You have to decide if you want to continue to walk around with stored pain blocking your heart and limiting your life. The alternative is to be willing to let it go when it gets stimulated. It only hurts for a minute and then it's over. <sighs> Proof positive that we are the ones who create our own suffering. An open heart is your superpower. That's the real medicine, people, is to never lock down. Because the more open you are, the more impenetrable you'll be. That the more magnetic, expansive the heart is, you create this bubble, this force field around you, electromagnetic, from the heart. And it literally repels, it illuminates. Then when we say shine your light, it's like, you ever imagine the, oh gosh, this I'm going to age myself, but the Care Bears and all those where they stood there with their hands and they beamed from their heart, love. That's what we humans are capable of doing. It's not just in storybooks or fairy tales. It is real. Love always wins. So choose love in all ways, always. Bless the trigger. So my interpretation personally is that we're going to have people that show up to our lives that are going to trigger us. They say, bless your enemies because those are the people that raise you the highest. Those are the people that push you to grow the most because they may get under your skin, but without that, you may not have taken action to make changes in your life. Those people will motivate you more than the people who actually are just, you know, the coddle you or enable you and say, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. It's not your fault. You're a victim, blah, blah, blah. You want somebody to challenge you to grow. We're not here to play small. You need a catalyst to pull it out of you most of the times. And those are the people that will raise you the highest. So bless the triggers because those are the catalysts to releasing those old traumas. Those samskaras. Hmm. So you have a choice. Do you want to try to change the world so it doesn't disturb you or your samskaras? Or are you willing to go through this process of purification? Don't make decisions based on stimulated blockages. Learn to be centered enough to just watch this stuff come up. Once you sit deeply enough inside, to stop fighting the stored energy patterns, they'll come up constantly and pass right through you, right before your eyes, sometimes. They'll come up during the day and they'll even come up in your dreams. Your heart will become accustomed to the process of releasing and cleansing. Just let it all happen. Get it over with. Don't process them one by one. That's too slow. Stay centered behind them and let go. Just like the physical body purges bacteria and other foreign matter, the natural flow of your energy will purge the stored patterns from your heart. Your reward is a permanently open heart. There is no more valve. You live in love and it feeds you and strengthens you. That is an open heart. That is the instrument of the heart as it was meant to be. Allow yourself to experience every note the heart can play. If you relax and release, this purification of your heart is a wonderful thing. Set your eyes on the highest state you can imagine and don't take them off. If you slip, just get back up. It doesn't matter. The very fact that you even want to go through this process of freeing the energy flow means you are great. You will get there. Just keep letting go and never give up. Remember, there are no mistakes.
there are simply choices. The moment you think you made a mistake or that there is a problem, there's always another choice, there's a solution. Don't get bitter, learn to be better. The moment you're in that space of you don't know, that's actually a good thing because it typically is when we are ready to have a breakdown, we're about to have a breakthrough. I'm taking that from Anthony Robbins. Date with Destiny, one of his quotes that was up on the wall, whenever you're about to have a breakdown, you're about to have a breakthrough. So you rise, you jump, you change your state. I believe personally that when the mind is acting all cray cray, you need to move your body that when you're so in your head, exhausting yourself by wasting that vital life force energy, because it gets wasted when it's in the mind, that's when you need to move your body, get out in nature, dance, sing, whatever it is you gotta do, get the endorphins pumping. That's what exercise is for, is to, to stimulate the endorphins within your body because it's the body that affects the mind and the mind that affects the body. So you cannot fix your life with the same level of thinking that got you in the problem or the situation to begin with. That's what we say. So the moment you notice you're all up in your head, that's when you need to get in your body. Interesting dynamic, isn't it? That's what we call the mind-body connection. A lot of circles, you're gonna hear the word soma, somatic, which essentially means it's emotional body. It's the sensations, the feelings. You've got to feel it. Because when you feel it, you reveal it, and that's when you heal it. Because oftentimes, people are tapped out, they're tuned out, they're numbed out from their own physical bodies. And if you don't have a connection to your body, you can't feel, you need to work on that. Because our senses are meant to be heightened. Because that essentially taps us into our highest spidey sense of intuition, our gnosis. So the body is your guidance system and we want that strong mind, body, spirit connection because the spirit is when you take in the breath, which brings you an awareness of the moment of whatever thoughts are arising in your head. So that connects you to your mind. And when those thoughts pop up, you start to go, wow, there's a program. Wow, witness, observe, let it come in like the clouds passing through. Witness it, observe it, maybe question it. Don't get too stuck on it. Don't hold on, don't cling to it because that energy is, is meant to stay moving. And when we get fixated on something or trapped in the mind, we can also find that it traps in our body and the energy lodges in dis-ease, discomfort. Because when we overthink about something, when we have a belief, a fixation, and we're stuck on that, it gets stuck in us. So really, any dis-ease in the body is essentially the sickness of the mind. I believe that's a quote by one of the old Stoic teachers, philosophers. And it's a true story. We manifest sickness in the body because we don't challenge the mind. We are so dogmatic and attached and addicted to our own stories, our own BS, our own beliefs. That's a true addiction. Our biggest addictions are to our belief systems, people. We defend them as if they're some real true entity, like it's a fight or flight, freeze or fawn, like we have to go to war and battle over our minds, which is what most wars are over, is the belief that somebody needs to be in control, that it's my way or the highway, or if you don't go along, we're going to have a fight, you know? Every war, every argument is over somebody trying to prove they're right. That's the bottom line there. So the question is, are you willing to stay open? because that's what allows you to grow and expand energetically, heart to heart coherence. It's what allows you to connect deeper with people, with humans, humans in unity equals humanity. 
you want to be in unity with your fellow humans and community and family and all that. When we close down, we actually feel more alone. When you're even tempted to close down, that's when you need to open more. Get out in nature and hug a tree. Sounds airy fairy, sounds silly, but hey, I'm coming from a long line of tree climbers here. I was always up in the trees building my tree house. Trees were my refuge, still are. Never discount the power of your heart. And when you think someone broke your heart, <clears throat> untrue. <coughs> it's not that they broke your heart. It's that they did not meet your expectations. People don't break our hearts. We just get hurt, usually butt hurt, because the belief system we had and the expectation that was uncommunicated to the other person, we wanted them to show up to us a certain way. And when they didn't show up to us that way, or they didn't love us the way we want to be loved, that's a perfect example right there. We say they broke our heart, but technically we're playing the victim to our own shit, our own BS. How do I know? Personal experience. They didn't love me the way I love them. They didn't show up and treat me the way I wanted to be treated. I treated them well. Yeah, I treated them based on what I thought they wanted. I didn't always treat them the way they wanted to be treated. That's some humble pie. So when you're more honest with yourself and you know thyself so well that you're not denying your dark or your light, you're embracing all of it, like literally, you know, you are the dark, you are the light, you are the devil, you are the angel. You are God's source energy. You are pure source energy. You are an expression of God in this, this life. Do you really believe that God made anything imperfect when he supposedly made each and every one of us in his image? If that is the truth, that means there are no mistakes and that we couldn't do better for that respect. But we are here to do and improve upon because that's what generations do. We're meant to improve upon the last, not fall behind which when you look around the world, you might question given the fact that oh, we're supposed to be so highly advanced technologically, I feel like we've actually fallen back on that one. <sighs> we all have our opinions, you know what those are like. Anyway, I truly believe this was a really good chapter and um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what stood out the most and whether or not you are willing to have a full open heart. And if you're willing to question when you go ready to close, like, are you gonna stop in your tracks and go, wow, I wanna stay open. Sit with that, reflect upon the times you closed your heart and what it felt like, how lonely that was. And then the times you felt so expansive, like ecstasy, pure ecstasy in your divinity heart wide open that's your highest state of experience the, the wider the heart is open the higher this this experience that's what it's about true richness you know the real true rich full life is the abundance that comes from within that inner wellspring of all that energy that comes from an open heart you feel you you don't need anybody else. You don't need to siphon off of anybody else and you don't need to feel depleted by anyone either. It's always a choice. So what will you choose? Hmm. Again, from my heart to yours. I love you so much. Remember to smash the like button, click the notification bell, be so kind and subscribe. I love you. See you till next time.